Greetings, biology students. Mr. Mechnick here for a podcast on the eubacteria. So yeah, we're talking about eubacteria. These ones right here in this branch on this phylogenetic tree. So we're going to focus on general characteristics, how these things are able to feed and get their nutrition, and how they're able to do it. So stay tuned and we'll cover those pieces of information on this short little podcast. So basically, these bacteria are the bacteria that live all over this planet. They live in a lot of different places. They are found on your skin. They are found on the bottom of your feet. They are found in your stomach, in your intestines. These things live all over the place. They've adapted to live in many different environments. So what makes them unique is that they are prokaryotic. They don't have a nucleus in their cells. They contain all of their genetic information wrapped up in a bunch of chromosomes, but it's not centralized in a nuclear, in a nucleus. So some of the other things that you should know about eubacteria is that they have a cell wall. So normally we see cells that have just a cell membrane, but in bacteria we see that they have a cell wall so they can survive in a lot of unique places. That cell wall is surrounded in some cases by this slime capsule. This really protects them so they can live in different places so they can survive in your intestines and not be broken down by the high acid content. Some bacteria have flagella. This allows them to move around much easier and many bacteria have these little tiny loops of DNA called plasmids. So second semester we might do some work with plasmids in in biology where we can actually take genes from another organism and actually put them into a plasmid so the bacteria can utilize that genetic information, use the ribosomes to make protein, and start doing some biotechnology. Bacteria range from 1 to 4 microns. So of all the critters that we're going to look at in biology this year, they are by far the smallest organisms. So how do they obtain their nutrients? How do they get their energy? Well, most bacteria are said to be heterotrophic. This means that they can obtain food from other places. So they can do this in a variety of different ways depending on the type of species that we're dealing with. So many organisms are saprophytic or saprophytes. These are bacteria that help decompose dead things. So when leaves fall in the forest, they lay there for a while and bacteria decompose them very slowly. Or a deer gets hit on the side of the road, it lays there. Over time, there's bacteria that just start feasting on that dead organism. Those are saprophytic bacteria. Many bacteria can be parasitic. These are the ones that make you sick. So if you've ever been sick with a bacterial infection, like strep throat or some type of ear infection or sinus infection, that's due to some type of pathogenic bacteria that found home um, in your body somewhere. And then we have a group of bacteria that actually are beneficial to living organisms. So we have many bacteria that live in our intestines, and these are very mutualistic. So they don't hurt us, they actually benefit us, they help us digest food that we consume. And a lot of mutualistic bacteria do live on our skin, and these are the ones that keep away the bad bacteria. So those are heterotrophic. Some bacteria are able to photosynthesize so they can actually make their own food by converting sunlight into sugars. These are called autotrophic. And then there's another group of eubacteria that are kind of unique and they can get energy by eating chemicals. So they're able to obtain inorg or they're able to obtain energy by eating things like iron rich compounds, sulfur dioxide, or nitrogen rich compounds. So these are called chemotrophic bacteria. So in terms of how they get their food, heterotrophic, autotrophic, and chemotrophic are your three ways that bacteria can feed. Now in terms of how they're able to do it, well they found a pretty easy method to divide and replicate and to make millions and millions of bacteria in a short period of time under the right conditions. So bacteria reproduce by binary fission. Some living things remain a single cell throughout their lives. For example, these are E. coli bacteria. Millions of these microscopic creatures inhabit our intestines. Bacteria are very simple creatures. Unlike most cells, a bacterium doesn't even have a nucleus. But when it comes to reproducing, bacteria are marvels of efficiency. When a bacterium reproduces, it pinches in the middle, and 
Then the cell divides in two. Each of the two new cells is exactly like the original one. Bacteria can reproduce very rapidly. Some types divide once every 20 minutes. At this rate, a single bacterium can become over a billion bacteria in less than 12 hours. This kind of reproduction is called asexual reproduction because only one parent is needed to reproduce. There you have it. That's called binary fission. It's a mode of asexual reproduction where they're basically cloning themselves. One bacteria divides into two, two divide into four, and so on and so forth. So these bacteria that live around us and in us, you know, are all over the place. They're very plentiful. So in terms of some of the specialization that they have, um, unfortunately, our microscopes aren't going to be able to see the details that we can see using these electron scanning microscopes. But we will be able to look at some typical spirillamin class, Staphylococcus aureus, and some lactobacillus. So these are the three types that I would like you to look at in lab. And the main thing you're going to be able to see is that cell wall. And you'll be able to identify them by their specific shape. So that's all I have on bacteria. Uh, we're just going to do a quick survey tomorrow in class. Make sure you're getting some general characteristics on how these things are able to survive and some of the unique specializations that they have. Until tomorrow.